Hi, I'm Rudy Winston with Canon USA, and welcome to this detailed video introduction of the new EOS 5D Mark IV camera. Canon will actually have two detailed videos introducing this camera. I'll be discussing the camera's still imaging features and applications. My Canon colleague Brent Ramsey will have a separate detailed video with a deep look at the video features of the camera. EOS 5D Mark IV is a nice continuation. It's got almost identical design as the previous 5D Mark III. The control layout's virtually identical, but you're going to find enhancements like a new touchscreen LCD monitor operation and a new button for direct area AF selection on the back of the camera. And it uses the same compact flash and SD memory cards that you probably use now. Versatile, balanced performance is going to be the hallmark of the EOS 5D Mark IV. And the camera should find appeal to perhaps an even broader range of customers. Diverse professional applications like weddings, events, studio work, and portraits. For nature, landscape, and travel shooters. And with its improved performance, even action shooters, people doing birds in flight, sports, and so on. Let's take a look at what's new on the 5D Mark IV and maybe the first place to start is with the camera's image quality. There's a totally new CMOS imaging sensor that now has 30.4 million effective pixels. This is going to give you more detail in your images. You'll have more cropping flexibility. In fact, the camera offers now a built-in cropping setting in the menu if you're shooting JPEG original images. In terms of how that 30.4 million pixels relates to printed output, if you're printing directly with no enlargement of the file in a program like Photoshop or something similar, at 300 dpi, you can output nearly a 16 by 20 print, again, with absolutely no enlargement or interpolation of the file. The camera has some new technologies that really maximize the detail that the camera can offer. One is the fine detail picture style, which by itself will tend to give you enhanced sharpening of your images, giving you more detail right off the bat. Furthermore, all the picture style settings now not only give you control over sharpening, but you also have control over fineness and threshold. So you have control within the picture style menu with all your available picture styles. There are a couple of additional technologies that leverage the potential that you can get from Canon EF lenses. The camera has built-in diffraction correction. And even if you're shooting at wide open apertures, the diffraction correction can give you enhanced sharpening to counter the effects of the low pass filter in front of your imaging sensor. Now then beyond that, the camera has built-in Canon Digital Lens Optimizer technology, the lens specific feature that really gives you the ability to maximize the potential image quality and sharpness and detail that your Canon EF lenses can produce. EOS 5D Mark IV checks a lot of impressive boxes in terms of performance. First off, it will shoot now up to seven frames a second. It means that it's even more suited to certain demanding type of shooting situations, whether it's sports, birds in flight, other types of action situations, even event coverage, where you may want to be able to fire continuously to get as many moments as you can. Mirror vibration control has been enhanced as well. The same mirror vibration technology that we first saw in the EOS 5DS and 5DSR cameras are carried over here. And another byproduct is that they give us faster mirror movement and less blackout time than we have with the previous EOS 5D Mark III. The burst rate of the camera lets us shoot up to 21 consecutive raw images and an unlimited number of continuous JPEGs if we're using a relatively fast memory card. Now let's talk about cards for a second. 5D Mark IV uses both compact flash cards and SD type memory cards. In terms of compact flash cards, especially if you're working in high demand situations, particularly shooting 4K video, you're going to want UDMA7 compliant cards that have write speeds of 100 megabytes per second or faster. For less demanding situations, you can use UHS-1 SD type cards with a speed class of 3 or higher. 
And here's an interesting thing. If you're using a compact flash card that's 256 gigabytes or above, or an SDXC type SD card, the camera will switch over to the XFAT filing system. Your individual files are no longer limited to four gigabytes in size. This is a noteworthy thing, especially for video shooters. With the 4K video frame grab, you can shoot individual 8.8 .8 million pixel JPEG images from 4K video at up to 30 frames a second. You can play them back on the camera's LCD monitor frame by frame. And then you can select any one of those frames and using a menu command, you can create a new JPEG copy of that frame as a still image that gets written onto your memory card. Another thing that I'm sure many 5D users will appreciate are the built-in timers that now are in the 5D Mark IV. You have a built-in interval timer for still images. You have a built-in bulb timer. And there is a separate time-lapse feature for time-lapse videos. Autofocus is a huge part of a camera's performance. Now, some of the changes that we have in the 5D Mark IV in terms of focusing are greater low light sensitivity. So we're talking the ability at the center focusing point to focus in extremely dim light. The AF points cover a broader vertical area of the viewfinder. And the camera has added large zone AF to the multitude of AF area options that you have. Now, speaking of AF area selection, there is a new button on the back of the camera called the AF Area Select button. And it actually looks like a sliding switch, but it is not. It is a button. You press it in. And if you customize it with direct selection, just push the button directly, you can change from one AF area to another. So you can change from single point AF to spot AF to expanded AF and so on. In 2016, Autofocusing with F8 maximum aperture lenses came of age in the Canon EOS system. We can get autofocus at F8 at all 61 focusing points with select Canon telephoto lenses and version 3 Canon tele extenders. When we look at the EOS 5D Mark IV, there are some nice new enhancements in terms of exposure, starting with its exposure metering system. It now uses the same 150,000 pixel RGB metering system as we've seen in the EOS 5DS and 5DSR and the EOS 7D cameras. This is an important advancement. You're going to get improved metering accuracy when you're shooting not only with available light but ETTL flash as well because the system is able to read not only brightness but color information. Automatic ISO is becoming more and more important to working photographers of all types these days. And the auto ISO control in the 5D Mark IV is even more refined than what we've had up to now in previous 5D cameras. You can user define the highest and lowest auto ISO. And more importantly, you can define when you're working in the aperture priority or program modes, the slowest speed you want the camera to work with before it begins to raise the ISO. Now before we were limited to a 250th of a second top speed, but you can now select any speed from one full second up to an 8,000th of a second as the slowest speed that you want to work with. And there's enhanced auto speed setting as well. You can have the camera automatically define what the slowest speed is going to be based on the focal length of your lens. Now it starts at the default of one over the focal length of the lens. When you reach that slow a shutter speed, the camera would start raising the ISO. But you can now fine tune that up to plus or minus three stops. So if you're changing lenses frequently, or working with a zoom lens and frequently changing your focal lengths, you can define much more clearly with the automatic setting what the slowest speed is going to be. Another benefit of the color metering system is what we call EOS ITR, Intelligent Tracking and Recognition. But what we're doing is using the color metering system to assist the focusing system in selecting focusing points to follow an erratically moving subject as it moves around the frame. Let's talk a little bit about the EOS 5D Mark IV camera body and what you're going to see when you pick the camera up. First and foremost, the camera is actually a little bit lighter by a couple of ounces than the previous 5D Mark III camera. 
there have been some huge changes on the LCD monitor on the back of the camera too. First off, it's a higher resolution monitor than the one on the previous 5D Mark III. It's actually got about 60% more dots of resolution. Maybe the coolest thing about the LCD monitor, though, is the touchscreen interface. You can use this full touchscreen control for menu selections. When you're playing images back, you can swipe on the screen the way you would with a mobile device to change from one image to the next. Similarly, you can pinch or expand your fingers to zoom in or to zoom out on an image you're playing back. The LCD monitor can change the active AF area that you're working with during live view operation. Just by touching the screen, you can tell the system, hey, focus here. You can tell the system, focus here. And if you have the camera set so that autofocus would be activated at the shutter button, when you touch the screen during live view to tell it, hey, focus here, focus here, it'll actually not just set the focusing location there, but it will literally focus there. It's a great feature. Finally, you can add to that a separate menu item called Touch Shutter, which means that when you touch an area and tell the system, hey, focus here, it will not only focus there, but as soon as the camera is in focus, it'll fire the shutter. A few other pieces of information about the camera body on the 5D Mark IV. The sealing against dust and moisture on the camera is superior to that on the 5D Mark III. We've added it to even more locations on the camera body, and you've got a level of weather resistance now that's about equivalent to an EOS 7D Mark II. A neat option on modern digital SLRs is Live View, where you can use the camera's LCD monitor as a viewfinder. And on the 5D Mark IV, Live View is enhanced by two big changes. We talked about one already, the touchscreen LCD monitor. The other is the advent of dual pixel CMOS autofocus technology in this camera. First off, you are able to choose your autofocus preference. By default, the camera comes in what's called face detect and tracking. And what that means is that the live view autofocus is going to be looking out over a broad area of the picture. If it sees one or more faces, it will choose the face that it thinks is the most prominent one, the largest or the one closest to the center usually. Put the focus on that face, and then if that person starts to move around, it will literally follow that person. Now you also have a wide area setting that doesn't focus on faces, and that's called FlexiZone Multi. It starts off with a broad area setting where the camera will automatically focus, usually on the nearest subject with detail. But what's cool is, once again, you can go to the touchscreen interface. In FlexiZone Multi, where the system starts in a broad area, you can just touch an area of the screen and tell the system, hey, here's where I want you to focus. And it'll focus using a smaller area. So you can quickly put the focus from the foreground to the background. And this can be done actively as you're shooting. Finally, if you want even more control over the area that's being covered for your focusing, you can switch in the menu to FlexiZone Single. And what this means is that now you're using a single, smaller AF area. You touch the screen to tell the system where to focus. And anytime you want to change that to focus from the background to the foreground or whatever, easy to do. Just tap the screen with your finger and instantly the camera will refocus if the shutter button has been set to be the active place where focusing would begin. Now separate from that, you have the choice of your focusing being continuous or you can lock focus on stationary subjects. And ironically, for live view operation, that's going to be done with the same AF or servo controls that you have on top of the camera and the top LCD panel that you'd normally use during viewfinder shooting. And finally, if you're using the servo AF, the continuous autofocus in live view, you can shoot up to 4.3 frames a second maximum with that servo AF engaged. So the camera has the ability to continuously focus upon moving subjects during live view operation. We've taken a critical in-depth look at some of the new features and capabilities of the EOS 5D Mark IV. The bottom line is if you're a current EOS full frame user, this is a camera you want to consider Look at the updates and think about how they may potentially be of interest to you. 5D Mark III has been a great all-around camera for over four years now, but the Mark IV should broaden that appeal to even more users.
Now, if you're using an APS-C camera with a smaller imaging sensor, camera like a 7D or something similar, you may have been considering full frame as an option to step up to, and here's a camera that underscores the improvements in image quality and yet remains very versatile and practical in many, many different situations. And finally, if you're using a competitive brand of camera, you can consider the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV as one new and potentially compelling aspect of a tremendous camera system, the Canon EOS system. I want to thank you for joining us in this detailed look at the still imaging capability in the EOS 5D Mark IV. There's more information available on Canon's website at usa.canon.com. For Canon USA, I'm Rudy Winston. Thank you for joining us.